So this is, this is pretty typical of what you see even in high severity patches where even all the trees are killed. Even a long ways from the nearest live tree, you see pretty vigorous uh, conifer regrowth, natural regrowth. You've got white fir, you've got sugar pine, uh, you've got incense cedar. Um, even growing in between the patches of shrubs and even right through the middle of it, you get conifer saplings, seedlings, like this one, and this one, and these over here, growing right up through the middle of the shrubs. In a very short period of time, they'll overtop these shrubs, and eventually they'll shade them out, and the shrubs will die back, and you'll get uh, a mature conifer forest once again. And that's just basic natural succession. That's the way it works in these forests. You do not need to log and artificially replant uh, to get a forest here again. And in fact, that's one of the absolute worst things you can do. And in part is also because these patches of shrubs are some of the most important habitat as well. It's not just the standing dead trees that are important habitat for all the cavity nesting species that, uh, that use the cavities in these dead trees for nesting. It's also the species that dwell in the shrubs, species like fox sparrow. And, um, and these shrub patches have incredibly high levels of biodiversity as well. And in fact, uh, the indications are that this type of habitat, which is called montane chaparral, has declined in the Sierra Nevada since the 19th century, and uh, primarily because of the reduction in fire in general, and in particular because of the reduction in high severity fire. Uh, we are still in a period of fire suppression, and even though fires have increased a little bit in the last 20, 30 years, we are dramatically below uh, 19th century levels in terms of the total area that burns every year on average, currently versus pre-1850. And so we actually have a lot less fire now than we had historically. That's a very important point for people to remember because a lot of the biodiversity in the forest, in fact most of it, depends in one way or another on wildland fire. So we're still in the Starfire area and we're still in the Duncan Canyon inventory roadless area. Uh, this is an area that's pretty typical of uh, fire effects in, uh, in a large portion of Sierra Nevada fires currently. Uh, in other words, this is an area that burned at low severity uh, with some moderate severity effects. Uh, most Sierra Nevada fires currently burn, uh, the majority of them burn at um, low and moderate severity of any individual fire. And you'll get patches of high severity effects where most or all the trees are killed. But most of, it, most of the area that burns in most fires looks a lot like this. And this is an old growth forest you can see the fire burned very, very low severity. The flames were very low, just scorched a little bit of the lower part of the trees, killed small trees, but didn't kill um, hardly any of the, the larger trees. Um, this is spotted owl habitat. Spotted owls tend to return to the areas of burn after the fire. Um, and in fact, um, they benefit from a portion of their larger territory burning at high severity. So if there are patches that burn at high severity, that actually benefits them because it increases their prey species in those areas. Uh, species like the dusky-footed wood rat, for example, really like the high severity patches. So the owls will live in areas like this, but they may forage in some of the areas that burn high severity at the periphery of their territory. And that actually increases their survival and reproduction rates. So these trees here are white fir. And uh, what you see here is the very, very top of the trees, maybe the top 10 or 12 feet, is the only part of the, the crown, the live green foliage of the tree that survived the fire. Everything below that is foliage that regrew after the fire. This is called epicormic branching. And basically the tree sends out new growth from the, the trunk of the tree in areas where the crown was lost from the fire. It's kind of like the proverbial lizard regrowing its tail. This was not known to occur uh, before because these trees were always cut down the year after the fire and people didn't study them. But well, now we discover this does in fact happen.